Hello everyone, this is Professor Indrajit Mukherjee from Shailesh J. Mehta School of Management, Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. So, I will be delivering this 20 hours lecture on quality control and improvement using Minitab. And uh, in the introduction video, I have already mentioned that what are the topics that I will cover, which books I will follow. But for your reference, I will again show the book list which I will prefer to use. So, uh, number one is uh, DC Montgomery's, Douglas Montgomery's book on applied statistics and probability for engineers. Then uh, same author introduction to statistical quality control, uh, design analysis or experiments also from the same author. Amitabh Mitra's book on fundamentals on quality control and improvement, Westerfield's books on total quality management, Evans books on management and control of quality. These are the reference books that I will use. Uh, along with this, uh, 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 Philip J. Ross books on uh, uh, Taguchi's method in quality engineering, that books also I will uh, prefer and suggest you to go through. And, uh, uh, and also on basic statistics, uh, one of the book is Keller's books on managerial statistics, that is also a uh, good book to refer, uh, basics on statistics basically. Okay. So, these are the reference books that I will follow. So, I will uh, start with uh, definition of quality and then we will go ahead with the uh, other aspects of quality before I enter into uh, control aspects and improvement using Minitab. Okay. So, uh, so uh, what comes to our mind when we are talking about what is, uh, somebody can ask that, what is quality, can you define what is quality. So, uh, some of the definitions that I will prefer to use over here is that uh, quality is fitness for use, that is the definition of Juran, a quality guru. Okay. So, uh, meeting customer requirements, what customer wants, I am delivering that only. So, that is fitness for use basically we can think of and that is uh, first definition we can think about when we are talking about quality. Also in abstract form this is. Uh, then the second definition uh, we can think of uh, right the first time that means uh, freedom from defects, there is no defects in the process or products like that. So, that is right the first time, that is another definition of quality. Uh, and then uh, third definition may be uh, reduction of variability basically. So, reduction of variability or consistency. Okay. We want consistent products like that. So, nowadays people are also defining in terms of reduce variability. Okay. Then uh, we also talk about improvement in quality that is continual improvement. I go to the process at discrete time point and do some improvements. Then again at discrete time point I do some improvements like that. So, uh, continual improvement. So, improvement is an important aspect in quality and overall uh, finally what we can think of is the attitude towards quality that is also important. So, attitude defines quality basically. Okay. So, organization attitude, person attitude towards uh, how, uh, how much uh, we will dedicate towards quality that, that depends that also creates quality culture and that is also important, very important aspect. So, uh, when when somebody thinks about quality, he thinks about uh, customer requirements first. So, what is what customer wants and I want to deliver that what customer wants, then I want to do it right so that uh, there is no mistake in that uh, process uh, what I am delivering. So, there is no, no uh, defects in the process. So, freedom from defects. Then we can think of that uh, we want to reduce variability that means, uh, consistently I am producing a quality which is, which does not have any variability as such. So, every time same products, every time same products, I, I am consistent basically. So, that is uh, uh, consistency in quality. Then we can think of uh, improvement in the quality. So, we can, we can think of uh, continual improvement. So, at discrete time point we are making improvements like that and overall the attitude uh, should be right. So, uh, of an organization or a, or a uh, personal who is dedicated to the quality. So, uh, so, that attitude is also important. So, that we do something on, we talk in terms of quality uh, and we build a quality culture like that. So, so uh, these are the aspects when, when we think about quality in abstract form, these are the things comes to my mind when, when I am talking about quality. Okay. So, uh, then uh, what is the uh, goal of quality? Goal of quality uh, we can think of as uh, we want to satisfy customers. So, customer satisfaction is our goal. We want to improve the yield of the process that means, uh, uh, output by input. So, we want to improve the number of outputs as compared to the number of inputs like that. So, that is the uh, classical definition of yield. So, I am using the definition over here. So, I want to improve the yield of a process, maybe chemical process, maybe manufacturing process or something like that. So, I want to deliver uh, and uh, the outcome should be uh, number of inputs and outputs. So, 100 percent yield we want basically. So, so 
Then we can think of reduced variation that we have already mentioned about that consistency. So, consistency is important aspects in quality. So, the goal of quality is to reduce variability, reduce defects that uh, freedom from any defects that right the first time that we have defined earlier in the uh, last slide also comes to our mind like that. So, customer satisfaction, uh, improve yield, reduce variation, reduce defects, these are the goals of any, any uh, quality improvement uh, uh, project like that. So, goal of quality is that in an organization. So, then why quality, then why we should think about quality, why people, somebody can say why quality, why quality is so important over here. So, if you see the definition over here that I am using over here, profit is equals to uh, price minus cost multiplied by uh, unit, uh, unit sold over here, ok. So, this uh, unit sold will go up if my quality is good, people will buy more because uh, my quality is good. So, then uh, 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 sales will go up basically of a, of a particular product, ok. So, uh, when sales goes up profit increases like that. So, this has a direct relationship with the profit over here. So, unit sold goes up profit also increases like that. But uh, over here the unit price over here is dictated by the competitors and uh, policy of the companies like that. So, you, you cannot abruptly change the price. So, I if I increase the price it will not work basically, ok. So, price cannot be improved uh, drastically. So, uh, we need to be very cautious about that and that is not in my control, it is dictated by the market. So, what we can do is that basically uh, we can reduce the cost over here. So, what we can do is that reduce cost per item cost if I can reduce like that and unit sold if we can improve this one that will also help in uh, improving the profit over here. So, uh, sales will go up or unit sold will go up and cost will go down when we, when we can improve quality basically. Okay. So, quality is all about uh, reducing cost and improving uh, the uh, requirements, improving what is required by the customer basically. So, uh, we want to, we want to reduce the cost and, uh, and also we want to improve the sales. So, that means, I have to improve the quality of the products. So, we have not defined, uh, we are defining in abstract way what, what quality means. So, uh, so, uh, you can think of that if quality increases, if quality of a product increases, people will buy more and that will also reduce cost. How it will help that we will see because uh, how cost will go down, somebody can ask how cost will go down over here. So, cost will go down because variation will come down, so rejection will go down. So, that has a relationship over here. So, there is a uh, relationship which will explain uh, as the course progresses. So, cost will go down. Uh, if quality improves like that. So, rework, rejection will go down. So, that will improve. So, uh, external failures that is failure uh, when it goes to the customer will go down and even internal failure that with process failure will also go down. So, that will reduce the cost, overall cost will go down. So, price of the uh, or unit cost of the product and price we cannot do anything, but cost we can uh, if we, uh, quality improves, rejection will go down, uh, rework will go down. So, uh, so, all this will impact cost of poor quality, it will impact the cost of poor quality and so, uh, if this goes down, cost of poor quality also goes down like that. So, uh, that way we can think of that why quality is so important, why people are uh, saying that we should, we should emphasize on quality. So, uh, that is the fundamental definition which I can take from books and uh, that is, that is what uh, way we can explain that why cost is so important like that, ok. So, uh, uh, different aspects of quality that I will cover over here. One is one is uh, quality of design, uh, quality of conformance, and if we are taking care of quality of design and quality of conformance, basically, uh, then uh, the product will perform. So quality of performance will uh, definitely improve if uh, the earlier two stages are taken care of. So there are three three aspects over here we can think of. Quality of design is uh, what type of feature you are providing, what type of design flexibility is there. Uh, and uh, quality of design that means uh, how well the design is, uh, how, how you have planned the design basically. So, if the design is very good robust, so in that case what will happen is that uh, you have a good products in the market. So, uh, and uh, then uh, whenever I have the design, so I have to implement that one and, and build it basically. So, that is quality of conformance basically. If and I have to adhere to the whatever is uh, given in the design. So, so initially it is uh, developing the design and how much quality aspects can be uh, can be implemented over there. So, quality of design is very important. Quality of conformance means design is already uh, uh, completed and it is in production. So, so in that case how much I can uh, 
uh, adhere to the uh, quality of design, how, how much I can adhere to the design that is given by the designer basically. So, quality of conformance uh, means uh, how much we can adhere to the specifications that is given in the design, ok. So, uh, and uh, that will dictate uh, that whether the products will be free from any deficiency. So, that will dictate like that. So, if these two things are taken care of in that case automatically we can expect that if these two are of uh, are of quality that means of high quality. So, in that case we can expect that uh, performance will also definitely will be very good. So, uh, we are manufacturing a car. So, in that case let us say design of the car is very good and uh, we are adhering in the process and we are adhering to the uh, specification what is given in the design. So, I am quality of conformance is also very good. Uh, so, and whatever is given by the designer we are we are uh, delivering that one. So, uh, and overall then we can see then in field how it performs the car, how it performs in the field. So, uh, maybe oil consumption and anything we can think of. So, uh, how it will perform in the field. So, that is quality of performance basically. Uh, so, when put to use. So, that is the function or service when put to use. So, these are the three aspects of quality. So, we will uh, slowly discuss about quality of design. Then we will go to quality of conformance. What are the things people are uh, looking into that and then how to relate uh, some data, some information and using mini tabs to, to, to resolve some of the uh, problem problems that we encounter uh, generally in quality. So, that will be our agenda of this course ok. So, I will just go through the theoretical aspects of this uh, and then we will come to the uh, practical aspects how to use mini tab in various scenarios like that ok. So, uh, so, quality of design you have to remember that quality of design and quality of conformance uh, we are talking about over here ok. So, uh, then uh, then somebody can say that uh, uh, what is what do you mean by so uh, all in abstract uh, uh, terminologies you are using. So, can you define manufacturing quality like that? Yes, Carvin has given a definition that there are five uh, there are eight dimensions of quality over here in manufacturing quality we can think of. So, uh, one is performance that is uh, uh, for example, uh, car fuel consumption that I mentioned. So, performance of the car uh, when when it comes to road uh, performance, on road performance like that. So, that is we can think of performance is one of the dimension of quality. Uh, so, these are also abstract, but they uh, he has clearly mentioned about this that these are the eight dimensions we can think of. When we think of manufacturing quality, this can be the dimensions, eight dimensions what we can, uh, how we can define quality basically, ok. So, performance is one of the dimension, then we have reliability that means with time. Uh, failure rate, uh, failure probability or time between failures we can think of. So, that is known as reliability of a product. Uh, so, then uh, durability or strength of the products ok. So, uh, uh, how many years it will last basically. So, in that case durability of the product, strength of the products which stand. Uh, so, that is durability. So, then serviceability which is which is uh, we can think of uh, speed easy to repair like that, that that aspects we can think about serviceability. And then aesthetics, beauty of that. So, beauty of the products that we are delivering like that. So, uh, beauty is one of the dimension we can think of. So, although in abstract form we can uh, we can always uh, think about that is one of the dimension that also when when we are talking about manufacturing quality we are talking about this dimension also. So, any additional feature that is provided that is flexibility in the design. So, that is also uh, we talk about when we are talking about, about manufacturing quality what additional features are there. So, when we talk about quality of a product we are talking in all these dimensions like that. How is the performance of the product? What is the reliability of the product? What is the durability of the product? Serviceability of the product? Aesthetics of the products? Additional feature what is provided in the design? So, uh, uh, what what can be accommodated in the design like that? So, is there any flexibility? I can change this part or something like that. So, any additional features that means modular type of designs like that. So, flexibility in design what is provided in the product. So, in that case uh, we can think about that dimension also. Then perceived quality whenever I am using that products uh, uh, what is what is the uh, quality level of that. So, perceived quality that means when you experience the sales uh, when somebody has sold you the products and you have experienced the uh, product like that you have used the product basically and what is the uh, performance of the products that we want to uh, also uh, that that we can think of another dimensions of quality over here. So, then uh, conformance to standard consistency and precision in a product that is also important over here. Conformance to standard means uh, when I am manufacturing that one defect free what uh, freedom from the any defects like that and uh, variation is minimum like that. So, so, when I am talking about consistency means uh, whatever target that has defined, designer has defined the target. So, uh, am I hitting the targets like that? Am I am I doing it with little variability like that? So, that is the uh, 
uh, what we think what we can think of as conformance to standard. That means, there is a specification how much we are adhering to the specification like that. So, these are the uh, another a, uh, we can think of 8 dimensions that is provided for uh, when we define quality. So, that is that we can think about manufacturing quality like that ok. Uh, then uh, in 1985, Parasuraman defines service quality. Uh, it was in abstract form. So, Parasuraman uh, provided uh, some definition of service quality. So, uh, interface of marketing and uh, operations over here. So, there is a interplay between uh, marketing management and operations management like that. So, uh, that way we can think of service quality like that. So, so uh, this uh, Parasuraman did extensive survey and based on the survey he has uh, published two research articles in 85 and 88. So, and based on the articles what came out is uh, basically uh, this uh, five dimensions of quality service quality basically. So, first dimensions the, and this has nothing to do with the uh, manufacturing quality eight dimensions that I mentioned earlier over here. So, person Norman defines that service quality is different and we should address it in a different way. So, service quality he has defined that these are the five dimensions of um, service quality. So, one of the dimensions is reliability how much uh, service uh, this service is dependable or not, this is accurate service they are providing or not. So, that is uh, any company that is providing that service uh, uh, delivering the service. So, reliability is one of the dimension we should check. So, that service dependability can we depend on that, is it accurate like that whatever they are delivering like that. Then the second dimension may be responsiveness that willingness uh, to help the customer promptly like that. So, that is uh, second definition, uh, second second dimensions of uh, service quality. Then assurance means how much they are knowledgeable like that, how much they are confident like that. That is the assurance what they can give. So that is another aspect that customer sees uh, when they are talking about service quality. So there is a the third dimension there sees. Then uh, there can be empathy. Another dimension is empathy. How much they are caring to the customers like that? Are they approachable like that? That is the empathy aspects or dimensions that Parasuraman has mentioned over here. Okay. So, uh, then uh, tangible aspects that means whenever I am delivering service some products or goods I am also delivering like that. So, that can be uh, also we can it is not a pure service maybe. So, uh, goods are also delivered like that. So, when you go to a restaurants also you see the environment that is given lights and environments that is created over there that is the tangible aspects what I can see basically what I can see and feel that is the tangible aspects of that. So, if you have to improve service quality you have to improve in all five dimensions like this all these five dimensions and Parasurama has defined these dimensions based on extensive survey extensive survey he has defined all these uh, five dimensions all these. Uh, so, uh, so uh, then Parasuraman what he has uh, mentioned is that there is uh, whenever a customer goes to a service uh, service organization. So, he thinks about means he has certain expectations. So, expected service is uh, basic things that uh, somebody has to. So, expectation is uh, one of the aspects that they. Uh, so, before uh, encountering the service they have certain expectation about the company ok about the organization what, what type of service they will deliver. So, some expectation is there. So, it can be from word of mouth what people have told them it is the need what defines expectation like that and maybe experience of their service earlier like that. So, if I am using a uh, some some uh, refrigerated. So, uh, I will prefer uh, some of the brands may be so uh, which I have purchased some other products of them and so I have some expectation in build I, 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 I know their service previous service like that. So, experience is one thing that builds expectation like that and need also builds expectation and also word of mouth what you hear from others that also builds expectation basically. And what you perceive basically after the service is been delivered what do you what do you what do you uh, encounter after you have encountered the service and what is your idea about the service quality of this uh, of this organization basically. So, one is expectation before I enter the process and one is uh, after experiencing the process what is my idea of uh, quality of the service that was delivered basically. So, always there is a gap between expectation and uh, actual service that is or perceived service basically and this gap uh, what it, what Parasuraman has defined this is known as gap 5 in Parasuraman's uh, gap model basically ok. So, a difference between uh, expectation and perception that is a uh, service quality gap that we are talking about. So, uh, and Parasuraman has also told that in a scale we should uh, survey was done in a scale. So, they, so that was uh, defined by that. So, nowadays uh, any any uh, surveys we have a scale of 1 to 5 uh, which is well defined over here what you can see is that uh, I am delighted with the service I am satisfied uh, satisfied 
satisfactory service or dissatisfactory service or uh, I am not satisfied at all or uh, very bad service like that. So, I can have a 5 scale pointer like that. So, I, I can have a uh, scale where I, where I can uh, where I can just mention uh, the uh, expectation part of that. So, maybe I am expecting a uh, out of 7 points, I want 7 out of 7 like that. So, one should deliver uh, 7 or it can be if I am not, uh, if uh, expectation is low, it can be 3, 4 or like that. But when I actually, I actually encounter that one like rating what you give. So, when you, when you go to a, uh, after, after you have experience, they will ask you for feedback like that in a scale of 1 to 5, in a scale of 1 to 7. So, uh, all in scale. So, Parasuraman says that he, you, uh, uh, you try to understand what is the expectation of that every dimension, what is the expectation of all these five dimensions like that or uh, sub dimensions of that. Uh, we, we talk about items like that. So, uh, that is uh, what we are. So, uh, that is one rating we are getting and after you have encountered the service, then again you rate uh, uh, on those aspects like that. So, that is the uh, perceived service. So, the gap between this will define uh, will define what is a quality level and where to improve basically. So, Paras Raman has defined this gap model after extensive uh, research and uh, he has uh, identified those five uh, dimensions and uh, that is the surf call scale what he has defined at the time point. Okay. So, uh, this is the uh, service quality gap model what Paras Raman has given uh, in these aspects gap 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, gap 5 what I mentioned over here. So, this is the gap 5 what you can see over here. So, uh, this is the difference between uh, perception and expectation basically. So, when it is delivered to the customer and uh, how a customer perceived the quality and uh, initially what was the expectation, the difference between these two uh, will tell whether the customer is delighted, satisfied, neutral, dissatisfied or frustrated basically. Okay. So, there is gap one that means customer is having some expectation, but management feels uh, while designing this one. So, there is, there is some difference. So, that is gap one basically. So, when, when, uh, when we collect what customer expects and if we cannot exactly uh, imitate what they expect, then there will be gap in that. So, management perception of customer expectation is a gap one. Then gap two is management percept uh, has the perception, then uh, it is converted into specification, service standards or standard practice like that. So, there will be certain gap over here also. So, uh, and the third gap is uh, whatever service standard and what was delivered basically uh, by the organization. So, that is gap three like that. And sometimes what happens is that what you have communicated and what you are delivering basically, there can be gap between these two also. That is gap four basically. So, uh, that will create gap 4 like that and uh, and this is the overall uh, gap model what Parasuraman explained. So, gap 5 may be a fun function of gap 1, 2, 3 and 4 basically. Okay. So, that also explained by Parasuraman that gap 5. Uh, so, people are working in this uh, ideas. So, uh, analyzing gap 5 in different scenarios and using Parasuraman scale <coughs> surf call model. So, uh, people are uh, trying to understand this uh, service quality model given by Parus Raman and still uh, people are working in this area. So, this is a open area still. Parus Raman has also told that there is a <coughs> zone of tolerance like that. So, there is a desired service, there is adequate service and there will be zone of tolerance. So, uh, minimum tolerance, uh, tolerable expectation basically and what is desired basically, what service can be, should be like that. So, that is the expectation level of that, then, then there will be zone of tolerance. Customer will accept variation within this zone. So, I need adequate service and there is a desired service. So, you cannot go below that. So, my expectation cannot go below that one. So, uh, that is one thing that we will uh, want to, what Parasuraman has mentioned. So, zone of tolerance like that. So, what, what Parasuraman has uh, explained over here. So, <coughs> so, then within quality of design, what we will uh, discuss uh, in this course. Uh, uh, first thing is uh, voice of quality, uh, sorry voice of the customer, voice of the customer or need of the customer basically. Uh, and then uh, how to prioritize this voice that is known as Cano model. Cano model is used for this uh, identification of uh, or differentiation of different voices like that. So, stratify the voice and prioritize the voice like that because I, I want to make a priority which voice is important which is not. So, first is capturing the voice, second is uh, uh, prioritizing the voice 
using Kano model, then we will talk about uh, converting the voice into uh, critical to quality characteristics, what we will deliver in the products basically or which has specification. So, conversion of voice of the customer into CTQs like that, how this is done basically. So, that also we will uh, simultaneously try to cover over here. Then we will discuss about QFD quality function deployments or house of quality that links between uh, voice of the customer that links between voice of the customer and uh, CTQs. So, that also we will try to uh, uh, cover uh, over here uh, in preliminary lectures that we will deliver. Uh, then we will talk about so, in quality of design also we talk about uh, design failure mode and effect analysis. So, uh, some basic idea of that also we will discuss and uh, when we use design uh, failure mode effect analysis and then uh, uh, we will briefly discuss about robust design because this will be covered again in quality of conformance uh, about Taguchi's principle of robust design ok. So, in design aspects of people also try to experiment. So, this is coming under experimentation or improvement aspects of that. So, in design also they try to improve the design. So, they uses a robust design concept of Taguchi. So, we will discuss about that, but in quality of conformance uh, parametric design parameter parameter design basically we will we will try to discuss that one uh, when we are talking about this. So, uh, Taguchi's uh, method we can we can uh, we can say this robust design as concept developed in 1980. So, this was uh, popular in 1980 basically Taguchi started the work in 1950. So, it was not popular at the time point it uh, took 30 years to uh, people to accept this idea. So, in 1980 uh, it made a paradigm shift in the idea of quality. So, so, from goal post mentality it, it transforms uh, to uh, a robust design concept like that. So, it is hitting the target every time with minimum variability. So, uh, so that is uh, with a loss function. So, Taguchi explains that one the, the societal loss something like that if you deviate from the target you will have losses like that. So, that is the concept Taguchi has given. So, so we will discuss about voice of the quality, we will discuss about uh, uh, CTQs. Uh, how voice of the quality voice of uh, voice of the uh, customer is linked with CTQs and then we will try to see how Kano model can be used to prioritize the voice of the customer like that and uh, then we will talk about QFD that relates between uh, uh, voice of the customer and CTQs like that uh, quality function deployment or which is known as house of quality and then uh, we will also uh, mention about uh, uh, design failure mode and effect analysis with some examples how it is done basically and then we will talk about a uh, brief discussion before we uh, uh, enter into other aspects of quality. So, control aspects and improvement aspects using mini tab. So, some basic definition we will try to emphasize. So, what we have covered uh, uh, till now is that. So, let me just recap that one. So, I have given you the reference book what we will follow over here. Then what I have told is that what is quality that means we are talking about uh, uh, fitness for use uh, right the first time consistency reduce variation continual improvement and attitude of the organization that is all about quality. Then we have talked about goal of quality that means we want to improve customer satisfaction improve yield uh, reduce variation reduce defects. Then I told that uh, if we have to improve quality what we have to do is that we have to uh, uh, if, if if we can improve quality what, what will happen is that uh, number of items sold will increase and also the cost will go down. So, the number of items sold will increase and cost will go down. So, that is uh, why why we should emphasize on quality. So, price is dictated by the market that also mentioned. So, profitability increase in profitability this was also mentioned like that. So, then we told that there are three aspects of quality which we will cover quality of design first, quality of conformance and if these two is very good in that case we can expect quality of performance will also be good. So, uh, quality of design is important quality of conformance and then we have a quality of uh, performance which is uh, interlinked with design and conformance. So, that is also we have discussed. So, we have discussed that eight dimensions of manufacturing quality given by Garvin. So, this is performance, reliability, durability, serviceability, aesthetics, additional features, perceived quality and conformance to standard, conformance to standard. So, uh, this was def uh, definition what was given by uh, Garvin's uh, eight dimensions of quality. So, that is then we talked about Parasuraman's uh, uh, five dimensions of quality, service quality uh, and this is very different from the uh, manufacturing quality. So, reliability, responsiveness, assurance, empathy, tangible uh, aspects of service quality. So, uh, these dimensions was developed by uh, 
survey, extensive surveys like that, interviews uh, and based on that he has developed a scale to measure service quality uh, using gap uh, concept like that. So, uh, surf call model was uh, developed at the time point. So, this was used afterwards by many different organizations, many different scenarios and try to prove whether the scale is uh, this uh, is efficient to measure service quality like that. So, uh, and people are using this scale, uh, even now people are uh, preferring to use this scale when we talk about service quality and measuring the uh, gaps. So, in that case. So, then we told that service quality is all about gaps. So, gap uh, model was used over here. So, he has uh, conceptualized this one as gap model. So, Parasuraman mentioned that there are 5 gaps over here. So, gap 5 is the last one that is uh, what customer expects and what was delivered. So, that is a function of uh, other 4 gaps over here. One is uh, what customer expects and what we understand or as an organization, organization what we understand. So, that is gap 1. Then gap 2 is uh, what is the uh, uh, we have understood something, but uh, can I translate into uh, service standards like that? So, specification basically. So, that that there can be gap over there. So, and then uh, whatever standards we have developed, are we delivering that one? There can be gap over there also. And there can be communication also before I deliver that one. So, uh, I, I promise something. So, over there, there can be communication. Uh, if uh, there is a gap between uh, gap in our communication, what we want to deliver and what we have delivered, there will be gap four over here. So, these are the four gaps, which is basically leading to gap five which will lead to gap 5. So, uh, that is also important. So, that that part also we, we, we have explained over here in this in this session. So, then uh, uh, there is a zone of tolerance of any any uh, any uh, customer like that. So, he has a desired expect he has an expectation. So, uh, what should be like that and uh, and he also understands that what is the basic minimum uh, uh, adequate service definition like that. So, what is adequate service? So, below that I should not deliver. So, there in between there can be variation over here that is known as the zone of tolerance over here. Okay. And these are the topics that we will cover. So, in the next session session we will cover these topics. So, uh, we will close it over here. So, see you in the uh, next session. Okay. So, we will break over here and we will continue in the next session.